let's talk constructions for a little bit. There are a lot of constructions that we do right at the very beginning of the year. We are given a segment and we find the midpoint. We are given a point on a line and asked to do a perpendicular through it. We're given a point not on the line and we're asked to find a perpendicular through it. We want angle bisectors. We want all these different constructions. And typically we just say this is how you do them and we do a bunch of steps and hope that students just pick it up. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the underpinning things that are going on behind the scenes to make these constructions work. And all of these things deal with the properties of a rhombus. This little guy here is a real important uh, point to constructions. Now, I don't know if you recognize or knew that in advance, but, but this guy has some very powerful properties. First of all, it has all the parallelogram properties, and it also has two properties about its diagonals. The diagonals are perpendicular, and the diagonals are angle bisectors. So the diagonals are perpendiculars and they are also angle bisectors. These two things actually play a very important role in the behind the scenes of how these things work. Now in a minute I'm going to do this by hand and to do it legitimately as a construction, but here I'll just give you kind of a, a heads up what I'm talking about. When we do a midpoint, we create an arc, and that arc uh, looks something like this. And then we create an identical arc. We use the same compass length and everything. Where's our hidden rhombus? It's right here. This is our rhombus. And the reason it's formed is because the, the four radii were all the same in those constructions. And so we get our rhombus. And a rhombus has a property that says the diagonals will bisect each other. Over here, if you want to create a per perpendicular line through this point P on the line, what we want to do is we want to make P to be a midpoint. Why? Well, we want it to be the center of those two diagonals where they meet. So again, as I uh, place two points to the right and left, making this exactly a midpoint, as I stretch my compass and I create those, again, a rhombus is formed. This time we're using the property of a rhombus that the, the diagonals bisect each other, yes, and they are perpendicular. One more time, if we want to know uh, how to construct the uh, line through this point P not on the line so that it's perpendicular, we swing our compass intersecting twice, we keep our compass the same and mark a point here and because the compass never changed its measurements those four pieces are the same and therefore we get the perpendicular uh, diagonals again. Finally we're going to use the fact that a rhombus has a uh, that its diagonals bisect angles. So what we would do here is we would form two equal lengths and then make the construction from those two places. That's the construction for an angle bisector. But where's your rhombus? The rhombus you would find right there. There is your rhombus. What I'm trying to do here is, one, if this is helpful for students, great. Two, if it's helpful for teachers to see the connectivity of what's going on behind the scenes. The common question that's asked here is, hey, I haven't taught about a rhombus yet, or, or kids don't know those properties. That's okay. We can prove and establish those later, but maybe this is just a way to remember how to do the constructions. Or when we're asked to do something, uh, a midpoint or a perpendicular, we think, oh, I need to form a rhombus, and we start to look at those things. Let me do it by hand now, uh, and I'll go through each of those constructions so you can see them, and it can help you to, to learn how to do them and what's going on behind the scenes. So let's look at the constructions now and see where this rhombus is hiding. So let me just create a segment, and uh, here are my two endpoints, A and B. 
and I'm going to find the midpoint, let's say. So the midpoint construction, I take my compass, I extend it beyond halfway, I create some arc, I keep the compass the same uh, measurement so that I get the same arcs. Now, what I would do to find the midpoint would be to lay down my ruler, my straight edge, and I would find it. I don't see any rhombus here. Ah, but there is a rhombus. Where is it? If you connect the radii of this circle, here it is, and this is the same circle from this side, so this is the same radii here. Now, when we went from B, it had the same radii, and so did it from here. Do you see the rhombus now? So actually, by using the two congruent arcs, we guaranteed a rhombus shape to be formed. And guess what? We used one of the properties of a rhombus. Actually, it's a property of a parallelogram, is that the diagonals bisect each other. So what actually happened here is to create that midpoint uh, we use the fact that the diagonals of a rhombus would intersect uh, and bisect each other. A nice little hidden fact uh, behind the scenes. Let's look at another construction. Um, let's do let's do the construction where we want to create a perpendicular line through a point on the line. I want us to think about the rhombus. Where would it be in here? Or what point does this represent in the rhombus? If I want a perpendicular line through P, in the rhombus, that's going to be one of the diagonals. And this would be the other diagonal. So what we need to do is make P the center or the intersection of those two diagonals. So what I'm going to do is just mark any two points to the right and left of P. What that does is it makes P the midpoint. Now, if it's the midpoint, or in other words, where my two diagonals cross on my rhombus, I can take my compass, extend it beyond half, and I can mark above and below, and then above and below, and then draw in that perpendicular line. There's the rhomb, uh, there's the perpendicular line. Once again, the question is asked, well, where is the rhombus? Well, can you see it? It's still there. It's the same location because we use congruent radii or congruent arc lengths or not arc lengths, but congruent uh, radii, I guess, distance on our compass, we get four congruent sides. There's the rhombus, and the property that we just used, that the diagonals are perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect each other. See the rhombus hiding there one more time? Here it is. Let's do it again. Let's, let's see if we can track down the rhombus and its properties and how it helps us with these uh, items. Let's do an angle bisector. So if we had an angle, any angle, and we wanted to bisect it, well, we're going to use a, a rhombus property. Remember, one of the properties of the rhombus is that it, it bisects angles. So what we're going to do is make this angle one of our rhombus angles. So what I do is I construct uh, equal lengths here and here, here and here. That, of course, forms a rhombus. Four equal sides forms a rhombus. And we get our rhombus shape again. Now when I draw this in, I'm really, I'm, I'm creating the angle bisector. But I'm also creating the diagonal of that rhombus. 
And the reason it works is that that angle down in there is, of course, a, a an angle bisector in the rhombus that we have created using a rhombus property one more time. Let's do it one last time. This shows up in lots of places, but I just want to show you some of them, and then you can find the other places it shows up. Here's kind of a fun, little bit different construction. Here's point P off of our line, and we want to create a per perpendicular line through P. Now, what point does this represent in our rhombus? This doesn't represent the intersection of the diagonals. This represents one of the vertices of the rhombus. Let's show you how that will appear. If I intersect at any length my line, and then I use those two locations to create the next spot on the opposite side, P prime, what I've actually done is I'm able to draw this in and create a perpendicular line. Great. That was the goal of the construction. Why did that just work? Ah, I created a rhombus. And in this case, the rhombus is got the point P that is not the intersection of the diagonals, but is simply one of the vertices of that rhombus. Great little bit of mathematics there. Now I know that when you're teaching constructions, the rhombus is, is a later item. But I think uh, underpinning the constructions, if students know a little bit about the properties of a rhombus, uh, ahead of time, or just you explain some of these things, it can deeply help students keep track of the points and why they're doing the constructions they're doing.